Going to get loud. The working musician's ultimate guide to striking a new path through today's music industry. With your host, Paul Nicholas. All right, everybody, welcome to the show today. Of course, I am Paul Nicholas. It's going to get loud today. We've got Mr. Luke Zollinger here, the former EVP of Orange Amps, and has a new venture. Luke, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, Paul? Not too uh, shabby. Thank you so much for being on the show today. We want to talk a little bit about branding today. I want to find out a little bit more about what you guys are doing in the in the music instrument space, but then how artists can help brand themselves, these emerging guys. Obviously, you're a bass player. You're currently in the Atlanta scene. Tell us a little bit about uh, the band that you're in, uh, what you guys are doing, and then tell us a little bit about your uh, your new company. Oh, sure, man. Yeah, like you said, I'm a bass player. I play for a band in town called Heavy Chevy, and uh, it's, it's fun. Um, it's with a bunch of buddies, and we pick up a show, uh, you know, once or twice a month, and... Um, it's, it's mainly for fun. I know there's a lot of pro people, and I, um, so I can't really compare myself to that too much. Um, but we, you know, we uh, we're starting to play some more cover gigs, and uh, we played at like a W Hotel in um, Midtown recently, and that was fun. And uh, but yeah, so that's about it for my band. I don't want to go too deep in that, just because it's kind of just a. <laughs> Not semi-professional thing. Um, no, no, yeah, no, but that's so what the like, show is all about, man. It's, it's exactly what it's okay. for, is emerging <laughs> artists. So, you know, being modest is what it's all about here. If you were a rock star, we wouldn't be talking to you, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I get it. Yeah, you know, I'm actually starting to play a lot more like, cover gigs and stuff like that. I found a lot of enjoyment in that. I know you've done a lot with that, um, and I'm just now kind of discovering it myself. Um, well, then we, we should but, talk uh, after this. We'll be able to get you some bookings there. So anyway, moving on. Yeah, please do. Please. <laughs> but yeah, so um, as you mentioned, I'm uh, the former EVP of Orange USA, um, the USA division. And uh, about a year ago, I, I set out and created my own company um, called Revolt Brand Management. And uh, it turned into quickly a... Um, distribution slash uh, freelance for hire consulting kind of thing. Um, and now I'm working with um, several different companies. And I'm still working with Orange, really grateful for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so what would you like to know? And so when you were working with Orange, uh, what were your what were your primary responsibilities there? <clears throat> well, I was um, pretty much in charge of everything that was happening with the brand in the United States. So, you know, on a day-to-day basis, that was, um, you know, very much about, you know, shipping and receiving amplifiers and and getting amplifiers sold. But also a little bit um, of, uh, you know, brand management, um, looking after the brand, making sure it was represented correctly, um, overseeing um, the people that were doing a lot of the marketing activities. One of them is here, uh, Alex Oxer. He happened to be here today, and he's the current artist relations manager globally for Orange. And we did a lot of work marketing the brand um, a long time ago in the United States and built a lot of stuff up with it. Um, so, you know, the wide variety of things that I was overseeing. I mean, everything to do with the brand and how it was presented in the United States. Now, this might be kind of a funny story because because Luke and I have known each other for a while. Do you do you want to tell the uh, the audience there how we met? Yeah, I think I bought a few forklifts off you, right? That... <laughs> long before I was at Enter Talk Radio, and long before Show Slinger, I was a lowly, lowly material handling salesman for a number of years. It just so happened that I think that you called into our office and. I got a lead on my desk that says Orange Amplifiers is looking for a forklift. So I left a lot of uh, burned rubber in the parking lot peeling out of there 
to go down to one of my favorite amplifiers because I'm a huge fan of Orange Amps. So <laughs> I think you yeah, can be screeching yeah, a mile away. And so, and so I think we kind of, I, I think we, I think we basically traded you free four clips for amplifiers, and it seemed to work out pretty yeah. well for everybody. You gave but, us a really good deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. What are you going to do? And I still have uh, your, uh, your bass cab with the, the tiny tear there. I still use that in my studio all the time. And it is a freaking just tremendous. Oh, very cool. Tremendous. Yeah, the, the uh, wind on that just blows my mind for how small that cab is. Yeah, and which cab do you have? The it's SP? the, it's the, it's, well, it's the 4x10, but in the uh, 2x10 oh. case there. Yeah, you know what? That's a really rare one. Oh no, that's a fantastic cabinet. But um, that, it, uh, they didn't make a lot of them, and it was discontinued a while ago. But it's a really cool cabinet. I've got the two twelve version of that. I've got two of them, um, and they're great. They're so freaking loud. Um, that thing and they absolutely take up a lot screams. Of space. Yeah, well, that's perfect yeah. for me because at the time I was living in a loft, and so small studio just like everyone else i had that in iso booth and i think the neighbors three floors down were still like turn it down yeah what are you gonna what are you gonna so do which, but, so you have the terror base too do you have the 500 or the 1000 good question actually off the top of my head i don't know man i should probably throw oh, myself yeah, off the roof for that one crazy but loud <laughs> it well i do have to say it's crazy loud and even with uh, I've used it with really high end bass and really low end crappy, you know, three hundred dollar bass, just depending on whatever song I'm recording, and it actually sounds pretty, uh, pretty damn killer with each. But anyway, I digress. Um, so you've been working with uh, Orange quite a long, long time. I do want to talk to um, Alex in a minute a little bit about artist relations and that kind of thing. We'll get into that in the next segment. Um, but tell me, tell me, tell me what's going on in the, in the music products industry in terms of branding, and then we'll pivot a little bit and talk about artists and their brand and how they can uh, you know, sure. basically brand themselves. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that the music products industry is um, evolving in terms of marketing and branding. I mean, uh, I think it's kind of a slower moving industry as compared to a lot of other industries. I mean, the musical product industry is pretty small, all things considered. Um, I think it's a, like a six billion dollar global industry, which is roughly equivalent to like one day of USA domestic gasoline sales. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it's definitely still a little cottage industry. Um, but uh, you know, I think in the last ten years, it's um, changed from being very reliant on old school media forms such as print advertising and things of that nature to um, being more uh, obviously digital focused, but also, um, I mean, everybody's, you know, really uh, involved with social media now and, um, and even, you know, more kind of cutting edge um, trends and things like that. So that's just, I mean, you know, very, very, you know, large overview. I, I would say that's what's going on. Now I I missed you over there at Nam because we were running around doing a lot of different things. But walking around to some of the manufacturers there, you got a lot of guys that have a lot of cutting edge stuff and a lot of guys mm -hmm. that are building products that are basically still rooted in technologies from the '40s, '50s, and '60s. Do you do you think that a lot of the music products industry is really playing catch up when it comes to marketing? You were mentioning the kind of a slow pivot to social media and, and digital and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's been a slower pivot, I mean, for sure. Um, I, but I think, I mean, most people are kind of coming around to it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of funny just to take a step back. You know, all the technology is rooted in the 40s and 50s and et cetera. But, you know, I mean, largely, I mean, consumers have made a choice to prefer that. I mean, you know, technologically speaking, I mean, the industry hasn't been slow to upgrade it's been you know and just as, as similarly as you know vinyl is more popular today i mean <laughs> you know people have largely chosen you know to prefer that you know older 60 year old technology so um, let me ask you a question because this is something that has kind of been a uh a splinter in my mind as it were 
I know why I prefer certain sounds. Why do you think the public at large prefers quote unquote vintage gear, those class A amps, those old circuitry, you know, those old vacuum tubes? Why do you think that is? Is it just simply the richness of tone? Is it the the certain tone or is there some kind of, you know, vintage is cool thing? Sure. I would say it's a little bit of both. I mean, certainly um, that there are tonal characteristics in terms of warmth and richness, as you said, that, I mean, they really nailed it, you know, 60 years ago with the technology. Um, and, you know, there are certain char- characteristics that we just kind of prefer that the, those elements just really capture well. But also, yeah, there's definitely nostalgia involved. Um uh, yeah, I think that we like to be connected to our history and our feeling that we are, or, you know, especially when it's cool. So, yeah. And so from, you know, from the past to the future, where do you kind of see things moving from, say, you know, obviously you have a lot of experience with the Orange Guitar and Amps. Where do you see the industry moving, uh, say, in the Guitar, Amps, Cabs, kind of area moving forward is it going to still be a lot of this digital hybrid thing or is it going to be more of what line six has been you know pioneering with the all-out digital war um what are you thinking i think well i think that um there's already i mean there's always kind of been a, a lot i mean a pretty good group of you know um very technical little you know focused products like you were saying line six and the digital crowd. Um, I mean, and there's a large segment of users that are, are using products like the Kemper profiling amplifiers. And now you have um, people like Positive Grid and other um, very tech-focused um, guitar amp products. But um, I don't think that's going to change. I'm not really sure it's going to swing one way or the other, like, pretty rapidly. I mean, those products have existed in the market for a while now. I mean, or products that kind of serve that function, such as Axe Effects and other similar things. I mean, how long has Line 6 and modeling been around? I mean, it did, you know, 10, 15 years. 1996. I, know. I know that because I yeah. talked to the founder of Line 6 last year and uh, spent about an hour on the phone with him. Very, very, well, yeah. one of the founders. Very, very interesting cat. But anyway. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, that stuff has been around. And there are going to be people that prefer to use that. And there are going to be people that want to use their Plexi head. I mean, it's just, you know, different flavors. And honestly, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but I mean, you know, who are we to say which one is better than the other? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the whole analog versus digital recording debate. I mean, really, at the end of it, it's just like what you personally prefer and, and certain things yeah, are it's suited a, for different situations. <laughs> it's a philosophical debate. That that ranks right up there with the is art art debate. It, it cannot be... <laughs> It cannot be one, but after a few drinks, right somebody into becomes ball. an expert. <laughs> <laughs> after a couple of cocktails, the fists start flying, and everyone's really entrenched in their position. I will not stray from my, you know, Vox AC30. Damn you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my opinion on that is that uh, uh, analog is better than digital, and if you disagree with me, you're wrong. <laughs> That's how it's Somebody's already That's had a few it. cocktails. Fair enough. Opinion that I believe to be completely correct. <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. So now, the official arms amps opinion is just way to. So. <laughs> well, I I always look at it this way, and again, everyone will debate this until they're blue in the face. But I feel since I'm hosting the show, full disclosure on where I stand on the whole debate, and basically, it's just do what you dig. I mean, look, every guitar. Every amp, every drumstick, every cymbal, everything that you can hit and makes a sound is a color. I mean, Picasso didn't paint with only blue. He used a lot of colors. Everybody uses a lot of colors. Don't limit yourself to one color. You know, you got a lot of tools in your bag. You don't build a house with one screwdriver. You use a lot of tools. Same thing with a song. So, you know, don't limit yourself. That's kind of how I see it. But I could be wrong. No one's ever heard my song. So, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yet, yet. (laughs) <laughs> now, uh, and actually, uh, quick plug for you guys. Heavy Chevy is actually really awesome. You guys are, and again, I know we all hate labels, but kind of a space funk review kind of I call thing. It, How would you classify yeah, that? Yeah, spacey, funky. Well, it's definitely funk, first off. I mean, um, it's definitely funk music, but, you know, what? which, you know, 
ranch category of falls in, I have no idea. It's got some pretty heavy elements. It's got some kind of boogie elements, um, some, you know, real rock elements. Uh, we just kind of do whatever we want. We're an amalgamation of, like, a lot of different styles. I mean, we come from a lot of different backgrounds, and there's a lot of people in the band. It's like six members right now. And uh, Yeah, I've um, heard some really wicked horn so, stuff that you guys have done live. Yeah, and uh, uh, so... Yeah, it, it's fun, man. I mean, we, you know, really just do whatever we want. Um, it, it just because we don't really care. And <laughs> now, I, so, um, and I've, I've heard a bunch of recordings. Actually, full disclosure, one of them we actually use for the uh, the Show Slinger Android promo commercial that you'll that, find in the App Store when you the millions of masses nice. listening right now go and uh, and download that. It's um, Swamp Donkey is the song. It's a hit. It hit. is absolutely. So, so it is. Funky. It is truly uh, something that sizzles for sure. And I was telling uh, your your buddy Skate there that uh, I've been pressuring him for years when I see him out in the Atlanta scene that you guys have got to let me at some point. I'll book you all the gigs in the world, but at some point you got to let me come up and you guys do a version of Sledgehammer. Let me sing it. Oh, well, and yeah, the the hook and swan donkey is definitely a majorly derivative. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. So, yeah. <laughs> I got shut down with reckless abandon. I see how it's going to be. This yeah. interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can come out and jam out anytime. Um, we'll and real quick, you said you're. Here soon. <laughs> and what, when's your next gig again, real quick? Actually, it's, uh, I think it's uh, February 11th. There's an Oyster Fest. I should know this. Uh, it... I'm like a terrible promoter right now. Well, look, if you had if you were booked through the Shill Singer app, you'd be getting uh, automatic notifications. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to worry about it. See? Yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be right back yeah. in a uh, in a minute or two. Next segment, I want to talk to Alex a little bit more, uh, both of you guys, but about artist relations um, and how that relates to emerging artists, what artists can do to, to catch the eye of folks like yourself. I think that's something that people cool. are they're constantly asking us about it, and uh, it's something we're going to address. So... It is a beautiful 417 here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm finally back in the U.S. It's going to get loud. I'm Paul Nicholas. We're going to take a shameless promotion timeout, and we will be back in a couple of minutes. So stay tuned with Luke Zollinger and Alex from Orange Amps. serious about your music are you ready to run with the big dogs the experts at pitbull audio have the gear to get you into the game from leading manufacturers like mesa boogie fender pioneer and american audio to sound your best you need the best pitbull audio can deliver in rehearsal on stage and into the big time dropping beats shredding guitar or making the crowd roar whatever you dream pitbull audio can help make it happen we are pitbull audio we want you to play it loud PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hey, it's Tracy Smith and Beth Venus of Girls Talk Rock right here on the Inner Talk Radio Network. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Okay, Beth, they know that, but we want you to know that the industry pro's choice is Silver Tiger Production. STP is a full-service production agency offering sound, lighting, installations, talent buying, staffing, backline equipment rental and sales. Kapow! It's everything in the entertainment performance industry. It's all at... It's all that! SilverTigerProduction.com.
This is Going to Get Loud, the working musician's ultimate guide to striking a new path through today's music industry, with your host, Paul Nicholas. All right, welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you here on a beautiful Tuesday here in Atlanta. We've got Mr. Lute Zollinger, the former EVP of Orange Amps USA, and Alex from Orange uh, in Artist Relations. Thanks again, guys, for being on today. Um, wanted to talk a little bit in this segment about Alex Artist Relations, right up your alley. Tell us a little bit about what it is uh, that you're currently doing there. Sure, man. Um, so I do international artist relations for Orange, uh, which means that the final say on whoever gets endorsed comes back to me. That's worldwide. And I've got two employees that work for me in the U.K., and they handle a lot of the coordination of our marketing team with our artist relations. And they also endorse artists themselves and help with backline support, which is loaner support. And then um, I've also got a network of distributors, and a lot of those guys have their own social media and artist relations teams. So it's a lot of pulling them together and making sure they have all the resources they need to support our artists worldwide. And so you're based here in Atlanta, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so now I know I have to go find you and kick your ass for not uh, sponsoring me. I mean, I, I don't know. You guys turn down my application every year. <laughs> every year? Man, catch, catch hit, man. <laughs> well, uh, there's always a problem there with that. Huh? What are you going to do? Uh, Never so stop tell trying. me. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to go until the wheels fall off, right? You know, you don't have to be 18 <laughs> anymore to make it in this gig. Uh, You're not the so, only one. With... don't worry. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll have to see how that goes. Uh, with the international artists, and, and by the way, who handles the domestic artists? Oh, uh, I think Alex may have dropped there. I mean, he's handling the USA stuff, too. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And so what I know a lot of our listeners want to find out is essentially how do they get the ear of guys like yourself or with other companies? Do you have to be a superstar? Do you have to have multiple hits on the radio, Spotify? Do you have to have record sales of X? What does it take to really catch... Uh, the eyes and ears of folks like yourself. Hey, can you guys hear me? Just want to make sure. Yep, you're good to go. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, in response to your question, uh, in terms of what I look for in an artist, um, it's varied. So there are definitely different levels of artist endorsements through Orange. Um, you know, if you're Flash, I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to make sure that you are in full-page advertisements. I'm going to make sure you've got gear for you waiting around the world, okay? It's kind of unfair that the, the biggest guys with the most money get that, but that's just the way it is. Now, moving down the ladder from there, the things that I'm finding important are bands that are leaving their home country to go on international tours, or at least leaving their country to go throughout their region. Um, I'm looking for definitely social media numbers. Um, to be honest with you, I, you know, I can't really give you a, a solid number because I also look at engagement. So, you know, there will be guys who've got 10,000 Facebook followers, but whenever they post something, it gets seven, you know, 700 likes. And that's a huge percentage and well worth me looking into more. Uh, and then, you know, I've got guys that just get special artist pricing. Um, they are just determined to have orange. They're probably not as big as, you know, a band touring outside of their home country, but they definitely love the brand and they deserve it. Um, you know, a hookup to make sure that they keep playing our stuff live. You know, um, there are also, I just want to mention, there are, there are basically four main ways that we can help artists. Uh, there's special artist pricing, which is a significant discount off of street price. There is uh, uh, backline support. And that gets into a whole realm of loaner gear all across the world and maintaining that loaner gear and all that stuff. That's a big part of an artist relations person's job is ensuring that when the artists leave their country, they're going to be able to represent the brand in front of thousands of people a night throughout the world. Sure. Uh, priority technical support. So making sure that the artist gear keeps working. You know, I get phone calls at 3 a.m. sometimes from people in Australia who need help trying to get a loaner until we can get something that they're fixed. 
And then there's cross promotions and content sharing, which is the number one thing that I can probably do to help support artists and that they can give back to me on. So artists creating content, videos, photos, stuff focused on the brand that I can upload to my social media channels. I mean, I've got artists that have you know 5,000 fans on Facebook, but they feed me videos, and that makes up for any sort of you know lower count of social media followers. Yeah, and that's something that's a recurring theme that I always like to hammer home with our listeners is that it's not about the total number of Facebook likes or this like or that like. It's exactly what you said. It's all about engagement. It's better to have fewer people with a very high level engagement than to pay some robot to get you 100,000 Facebook friends and nobody shows up at your gigs and nobody likes your videos. Oh, yeah. 100%. So (laughs) when uh, you're talking about artist content, they're sharing videos and all these things with you. What do you find is the best, most engaging content from your perspective? What do you like to see from the artists? Well, my perspective is what my orange fans like. You know, I mean, that's the only way I can really look at it. Um, Obviously, I've got artists feeding me all kinds of stuff like tour schedules and, you know, videos of them playing that sometimes don't even have our amps in them. And they're asking me to share that stuff. If I find something cool in that pile, then I will. But the stuff I'm absolutely guaranteed to share is stuff that is focused purely at Orange Addicts. And Orange Addicts like uh, large amounts of amps. <laughs> you know, so like one of the best performing pieces of content anyone's ever given me was a picture of Matt Pike in front of his, his sleep wall of orange amps you know i could post that thing every (laughs) week for the next two years and increase my facebook follower following you know 20 percent a week i mean it's crazy that the power that just a picture of a huge wall of orange amps has but you know videos of of them trying out the dirty channel on on their amp you know take a rock over 50 just try out the dirty channel don't even say a word you don't even have to but, you know, the right artist doing that will get enough attention. Um, you know, so stuff very specific, technical stuff, how you use the amp in the studio, uh, unique ways you use the amp, pedals that work with the amp, you know, those kinds of things, man. The really specific stuff is what the Orange guys love. And so uh, let me ask you this question, too. Actually, real quickly, I was just – while you were saying that you were talking about walls of amps, and I was like, man, you know, that kind of went out with the 80s or, or did it? But then I saw this hilarious uh, meme the other day on Facebook that said, uh, yes, we do need to build a wall, talking about Trump, and, and we're not going to get political here, because that's not what we do. So we do need to build a wall. It was just a wall of Marshall amps, which I thought was like the funniest yeah. thing in the entire planet. Right. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen <laughs> I that. Took we'll that to... I took that idea and kind of skewed it. I put the picture of Matt Pike's rig from Sleep, which is like 14 cats <laughs> and like eight heads, and then I just put uh, build a wall, make America British again. And that thing got like a million, <laughs> a million impressions in like an hour and a half. It was crazy. It's still floating yeah. around the web. That's uh, that's one I'm going to have to take a look at. We'll probably share it on uh, on our blog there. Um, so with emerging artists, you know, the one thing that I that I want to tell them throughout all of this, because they might be saying to themselves, well, you know, I'm not a rock star. I don't have this kind of huge, tremendous momentum where I'm traveling overseas to get the attention of these kinds of folks. But there is an important lesson to learn here, guys. And what Alex is basically saying is that when you know your audience, when you get on stage, you know who your fans are in the crowd. It's got to be the same thing when you're working the business side of this. Know who your audience is. If you're trying to get a sponsorship from Orange, don't roll up in there with a competitor's amp t- talking about how cool it is. You know, And that goes for... For any manufacturer, anybody that you're working with, know your audience and make sure that you're constantly aware of what, uh, you know, your your fans or your audience want to see. I know that may not be cool because it's totally rock and roll to not, you know, give a shit and just go in there and do whatever you want. But, you know, sleeping on your mom's couch when you're 40 isn't cool either. So, you know, there's a there's kind of a, a thing there. Would you would you agree? <laughs> Got to take a balanced approach. Sage words. <laughs> Sage words. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I, I definitely think that uh, every artist that wants an endorsement needs to understand just how endorsements work and needs to know, you know, it's one thing. 
let me backtrack. I don't like every band I work with. By no means do I like the the music of every band I work with. And that some of them don't even like themselves, so don't even worry about it. (laughs) It's all about the artist learning how to work with me in most cases, man. Because I've got a thousand artists over the years that I've supported, and I can't keep track of all of them. So they have to be really engaging with me in particular. You know, I also run all of the orange social media. So any content they feed me, the relationships they have with me, I'm more likely to help them. That's all there is to it, man. You know, they have to stay very proactive. Their audience really is me. And I will help them craft their message to my audience. But you got to know me, man. (laughs) You got to know me. And so, okay, so that that brings up a good question, which is uh, how how can they go about bending over backwards to make sure that they're engaging with you properly? What, what are some thing? what are some steps they can take some things they can do on their end, some notes they can make to make sure that they are you know, working with you properly and doing everything that they can. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. So number one, I really need to meet these people in person. You know, I mean, I can't, uh, I, none of the artists that I've ever actually met in person and it's not all of my roster. I mean, a lot of my roster has never invited me to a show has, sometimes ignored my request to come out to meet them. You know, that happens all the time. And it's like they don't really want to have a relationship with me. So Yikes. I would say be proactive with your artist relations person. Make sure that you get to meet them face-to-face. You know, once that connection's made, it's, the, you know, it's off, man. You can do a lot more. Uh, put them on your email list. You know, I mean, I'd I, be honest with you, a lot of the time I ignore, uh, you know, emails that come in from artists that are obviously just their mass email list. But some artists, the the really smart ones, will follow that up with a personalized, hey, I don't know if you saw the tour poster, but it's got your logo on it. You know, can you share that? That kind of thing. Um, Yeah, it's it's just all about relationship building with with me, you know, 100%. I'll throw something else in here, too. Um, I think a lot of people overestimate the size of a lot of manufacturers and the sophistication of manufacturers. And a lot of times like Alex, you know, he's the global artist relations manager and their social media guy. I mean, so you can also, you know, make contact with a lot of brands over social media, um, you know, tag them and post, do a review of a product you like, share it with your fans. I mean, you can start building relationships like that. And, Ultimately, that's, you know, what the company is going to be looking for in the end anyway. It's kind of to tie it back into the beginning of the segment, you know, where we're talking about how brands are, you know, marketing now. I mean, it's about impressions. I mean, so if you can demonstrate that you can effectively market a product and, and, you know, garner impressions online, then that makes you more of an attractive candidate. And you can do that before you even ever make an official request to be an endorsed artist. Uh Uh-huh. So what do you say to those emerging and possibly established artists who consider that, quote-unquote, selling out? Because, you know, there's a lot of people saying, man, I'm not going to be some show pony for blah, blah, blah. What do you say to those folks? That's going to make you less likely, you know, of a person to be, to be, you know, for, for companies to want to work with. I mean, unless you're like somebody like Slash, as Alex said. Um, yeah. Otherwise, no ponies, you know. No ponies uh, don't get much support, man. Otherwise, giddy up, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's just the name of the, I mean, you know, we we make products that we sell for a living. And, um, you know, artists need products. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's a pretty equal exchange. I, I wouldn't ever ask an artist to do something that they, you know, and misrepresent themselves. I mean, I, you know, luckily, you know, we work with companies that we believe in in the products. I work with a company called Earthquaker Devices as well, and we've got an arts relations program. We make good stuff. Orange makes good stuff. I would hope that the artists using our product think that, you know, think that we make good stuff and, you know, are, you know, don't consider it to be, you know, selling out. It's more like sharing something that they, you know, believe in. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, if if you're if you're going to get endorsed or you're talking to a company about that, you already just completely love the product so much that 
why the hell wouldn't you want to get get a play with free toys? And there's probably other goodies for these guys too, right? I mean, do you ever get artists saying, hey, you know, what's in the pipeline? Can I take a tour of the manufacturing facility? Can I see behind the scenes? Yeah. I mean, are those perks that they get to see? Yeah, definitely. Um, and actually, before I, I get into that, um, you know, I, one of the things I, I think maybe you touched on a bit uh, before, but I mean, somebody certainly like Orange or Earthquake or, or companies that have pretty serious uh, social audience numbers, that can do a lot for a brand or for a band as well. It's a, very much an equal exchange. And so if a band does a post about their amp or their pedal and the company reposts that, I mean, a lot of situations, the audience numbers on the manufacturer side is as big or bigger than the band. I mean, so there is, I mean, so there, it's going both ways, but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I was just going to simply say, yeah, you know, the band's got to make sure they don't look at it as a one-way street. A lot of artists, when they get into relationships with anybody, whether it's a manager, a fan, you know, whatever, they always are thinking in the back of their minds. From what I've seen, is what can this person do for me? You know, give me, give me, give me. But it's a better way to look at it to say, you know, what can I offer them? And trust me, if you help people out, you're going to get yours back. So if you look at it from the perspective of how can I help the manufacturer, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're going to be probably a lot more likely to give you a, a heck of a lot more love. Absolutely. What did you say, so, Alex? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, of the, of the all the artists that I have, there's probably 95% of them that need to be doing the proactive thing. There's 5% of these guys that simply don't have to reciprocate because they don't have to because they're yeah you know they're in the they're in whatever huge band they're a huge artist as long as I get them gear to put on their stage that is well, that's all I need and it's worth it right. whatever I have to spend it's worth it but there are the there are the rare guys man Deftones are a good example Mastodon are a good example of bands that are huge and don't really need to re reciprocate but they do and that's the that's the that's the that's a beautiful thing <laughs> and we're going to get into this a little bit more on enter talk radio it's paul nicholas it's going to get loud we're here with the gentleman from orange we will be back in a minute or two to stick around Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Girls are talking rock again. And people are listening. Today we're talking bands. Let's talk promotion. Red Giant promo, graphics, EPKs, video, photos, social media, and brand building using content marketing. But let's talk studio at CCMA, which is events, rehearsal, tour prep, piano, guitar, voice, rock band, lessons, workshops, and clinics. Yeah. Both proud sponsors of Girls Talk Rock. Well, get the lowdown on these services and contact me, Tracy, at girlstalkrock.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.
This is Going to Get Loud, the working musician's ultimate guide to striking a new path through today's music industry, with your host, Paul Nicholas. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Entertalk Radio. I am Paul Nicholas. We're here with the gentlemen from Orange Amps, Luke and Alex. And so in the last segment, we were talking a little bit about artist endorsements and how that process starts. Uh, I want to jump back in on that and ask Alex real quickly. One of the questions I had I didn't get to ask was, how many artists do uh, you guys currently work with every year? And uh, how many artists do other manufacturers generally work with is this a large program or is this for the uh the select deity rock gods that happen to come through well the orange program is i mean you know i've been there a decade and i would say over the decade we've probably worked with 1500 artists uh actively working with around 400 to 500 right now on a worldwide basis a lot of those guys come and go i won't hear for them for uh you know months even years at a time when they're inactive, and then they'll pop back up. So you kind of kind of mold the program to be reactive to that scenario, where all of a sudden an artist just comes out of the blue and starts requesting stuff. You need to be able to do that. Um, I would say that it's, I mean, it's it's small compared to a Fender, compared to a Gibson, you know. But um, at the same time, it's a huge number of artists for, <laughs> I mean, basically three people to handle worldwide. Yeah, sure, for sure. And there's so different the, there's different philosophies to that. I mean, you know, there are companies that will work with anybody, and then there are companies that hardly work with anybody. Like Gibson is way more restrictive. Um, I would say Orange is probably in the middle. Maybe, Orange but is is, there, oh, yeah, I mean, I they've got say, way more restrictive in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, I lost in the middle of that, and, 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 and a lot of what we, you know, the way that we've kind of we, we've, we've reacted to trends over the years. You know, I always say that Orange is really hot in the seventies. In the eighties, we were basically inactive, and that's when a lot of the guitar gods were crowned. You know, I mean, that's when the Slash came out, and that's that's just when a lot of the the metal rock guys that you know that people who really buy amps, okay, which are like you know, 50-year-old plus is <laughs> buying $2,500 amps for the most part. Those are the guys that they looked up to. And so we missed out on that a little bit. You know, we came back in the 90s with Oasis and Weezer. That was a good jump start. Well, when I came on board doing artist relations, uh, you know, it was pop punk. And so I hit that hard. And then it's kind of changed a little bit over the years. And we've always been very reactive to the genres that were popular. Um but we, we do have to limit the number of endorsers that we have, especially at this point, because, like I said, guys come back out of the blue. And when they come back, i got to be ready, and I can't be overextended anywhere. Yeah, that, that makes uh, quite a bit of sense to me. Now, speaking of being overextended and having, having limited resources, one of the things that I see from emerging artists all the time is that the expectation of what's going on is not in line with what's really going on. And what I mean by that is artists tend to think that any company, whether it's Orange or Gibson or even Schillslinger or, or anybody, has unlimited funds. So when they go for a sponsorship or something, they think they're going to get a check for $10,000 every single month or you know, their expectations are way up there. What would you tell guys that are you know just on the edge of looking for all these deals maybe they're they're playing some sold out theaters they're getting some good touring exposure what would you tell them is a, a good expectation when you approach these people pick a pick a brand you really like and stick to trying to get that brand to endorse you <laughs> you know i hate foreign emails man Anybody who sends me a form email doesn't really like Orange all that much as far as I'm concerned. They're hitting up multiple companies. They're trying to just throw, you know, throw it at the wall and see what sticks. And I hate that, man. Um, I think that everybody needs to understand that what you're going to get is back is what you give to me. You know what I'm saying? So you better love the brand. Uh, we're going to help you save money. We're not going to pay you any money. That is very rare. I mean, I might pay you to do an in-store, maybe. 
I might pay you to come out to NAM, but I'm paying you way. I'm not paying you cash money to endorse my stuff, and that's because I don't have to. There are still rare brands, and a lot of them are emerging brands, especially technological brands like, you know, I'm not saying Axis like pays anyone. They definitely don't. But a brand like that that is trying to introduce a new product into the marketplace, I have heard of some of them still paying artists. But none of us are paying money anymore, man. <laughs> Amp companies and guitar companies, they're not really doing that anymore. So don't expect, so you're saying... to, pay, expect to pay less. That also went yeah, up in I would, the 80s, Yeah, huh? kind of going off the back of that, I would say, I mean, there's a wide variety of results, you know, with the artist program. Um, and, you know, one is getting paid to play, as he just said. That's one end. And that's one extreme end. <laughs> you know, the more realistic end, like if you go into it with the expectation that your best case scenario is that you might get a discount on, you know, purchasing some stuff. That, I mean, that's a pretty reasonable expectation. And if all else fails, come up with something that they a- absolutely need. Wait until their forklift breaks down and then come in there with yeah. a killer deal. And uh, that's that's how I got my orange sponsorship. So, you know, yeah. you can use all different types of methods, folks. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> doesn't have to be one you know, way. That's I've all I'm saying. Out, I've, I've worked out endorsement deals with artists who could not afford the gear. But I've given them a price. And then I said, all right, well, let's work this off, okay? So we'll find a contract that states that they need to give me a certain number of high-quality videos, self-edited, but they need to give me some great pictures, and maybe they need to do a social media campaign. And that is a way to work that cost down significantly. Now, that's really interesting. I actually hadn't heard that before. That's something that I think we need to revisit right now. Let's rewind that. So for all the artists out there, there is a kind of barter system here look you guys are all songwriters you're all creative people bring some value to the folks at the manufacturers um so when you talk to an artist and you say hey look you guys can can work this off it's obviously not on the stripper pole they're sending you content they're sending you um all this kind of thing what yeah how much of that are you looking for you talking about months and months of of uh, of these guys doing this kind of thing or what it probably it probably varies, Paul. I mean, you know, at, at the end of the day, we're a company that has to market our products as efficiently as possible, and that comes down to very common core, you know, marketing techniques such as you know, co- you know, number of impressions. Like Alex said before, not only the number of impressions but the engagement rate, and um, and and looking at analytics like. You know, the cost per million, the CPM for, you know, if you do a, if we give you a product that's worth X um, and you get X number of impressions, you know, how does that relate? Is that good value, you know, for money? I mean, and, and again, you know, then you have the engagement rate aspect of it and the cool factor kind of stuff, things that you can't necessarily quantify. But um, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, we have, you know, we look at, writing off a piece of merchandise and looking at the return in, in numbers. So if you, if yeah, you're an like, artist and you say, if, if, if you're an artist and you say, I will do a post about it. And my audience is a hundred thousand people. If you give me this product that is worth a hundred dollars, we can, you know, actually we can do a, you know, an equation and, and figure out what that's really worth to us versus, you know, placing a print ad or something similar. Yeah, and I would probably um, encourage artists not to price their cachet value too high when, when they're talking to you guys about that. Maybe keep it more in the realm of reality with, like you said, CPM value and all that kind of thing. Yeah, what kind of impressions can you uh, really get for uh, for these folks? And so um, one of the other and questions that I have. by the way, man, that's why, I, yeah. that's why I value so highly content created for me to put on my account you know what i'm saying yeah exactly i mean it's 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 yeah. just one more camera crew you didn't have to hire one more sound guy you didn't have to hire to go out and create these content for you right you are correct you are correct you've got it you've got an <laughs> army of artists going out there being creative doing cool stuff so you know uh artists get crazy with it um is there it, it, so we talked about a lot of the do's what are some of the don'ts for these guys when they're creating content other than the obvious you know don't put competitor stuff in there 
you know, no, uh, keep the drugs, sex, and rock and well, not the rock and roll, but the drugs and sex to a minimum. What are some other don'ts when you're cre- either creating content or approaching you guys um, about these deals? Luke? I don't know. You know, I mean, I you know, know, it's kind of don't, funny. Man. I don't know. In I terms of like the. And beer drinking. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would actually say there's not a lot of, I mean, limitations outside of like really direct criticism. I mean, that that's a pretty. I mean,. Uh, and even that, I'm not so sure about. I mean, one of the things we're looking for with this is, I mean, what we would call a third-party review. In that, I mean, so for example, if we put up a video that says, "Hey, this is our new Gizmo. Check out how cool it is." I mean, that's great and everything, and that has meaning to a consumer. But if a third-party person such as a band puts out a video saying, Hey, I found this new gizmo and I think it's really cool. That has a different, more serious amount of weight, um, to that same consumer, um, being that obviously they're a third party and maybe aren't as directly, you know, um, responsible for that gizmo. Um, testimony. So, is key. I mean, that, that has more authenticity. And so in that regard, I mean, there's not a lot of don't as long as that's authentic. Um, I mean, so, I mean, yeah, even like, okay, a competitor's product, I mean, if they're, if they're doing a video and they're saying, these are my favorite amps and it's X or these are my favorite pedals and it's Y and, um, you know, you happen to be one of those things. I mean, that still has value. So there's not a lot of specific don'ts. I think there's like just general stuff that anybody with, you know, half a brain wouldn't do, obviously. I mean, but, uh, so that, so, uh, I guess there's if, not if a solid answer really- on that in mind. Yeah, we're getting really specific. I actually encourage, if someone's going to give me content to put on my social media, you know, so it looks like it's coming out of my, you know, brain, it, I want it to be objective. Okay, I, don't, I actually don't want it to be super salesy. I would rather them be super salesy with their audience. Okay, which sounds silly, maybe, but I don't like... I don't like overly salesy stuff. I don't think anybody really does. I think we've all pretty much evolved past that. So, um, you know, if the artist has a great social media following and they want to, like, just really pump a product for me, that's fantastic. But when it comes to my own stuff, I want to put up things of artists just kind of arriving at the conclusion that this is awesome. Help the audience arrive at that conclusion. Don't just straight up say it. You know, I mean, that's reflective of all the stuff, the content that we've been creating for our own product launches, too. You know, a playing, a video playing with no uh, talking at all, just the amp speaking for itself, is just so much more impactful. So I'd say that carries over to how I want the artist to try to help me promote the product, too. Yeah, and you said it right there. Basically, you know, just keep it real. But me being in sales for such a long period of time, and everybody knows this, but it's worth repeating because artists aren't particularly you know, necessarily salespeople. But people connect with things on an emotional level, just like you com- you connect with that song, you connect with that tone, you connect with that lyric. It's all on an emotional level. Oh, that people pe- <laughs> people connect with products on an emotional level. I heard that amp and it made me feel rage. It made me feel this or that. Um, so be aware of that basically when, when you're creating content. Just like you said, keep it keep it authentic. Don't try and uh, uh, and be something that you're not. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah that forklift exactly. you told me had me feeling some type of way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Wait, that what'd you say? Over our social media too. You know, like oh, the orange Instagram is pretty much half pictures of beers that I like, and then half pictures of artists with him, and maybe like five, maybe five percent here's an amp that we're, that's brand new, you know, I don't, it's, it's all, it comes, you want to create a personality and on the back of that, you want to sell amps, you know? Yeah, indeed. And so, uh, the, the last thing I'm going to ask you here, uh, for, for both you guys, and then, uh, we're going to have to uh, cut it here, but, um, you, you guys are selling a particular type of amps. What genres are you looking most to approach you guys? Cause it's not going to be necessarily country, is it? Yeah, speaking from my point of view with Orange Amps, um, rock and metal, we've pretty much got that one covered right now. 
in fact, almost to a fault. But, uh, you know, that's okay. That's our original bread and butter. But uh, we do have new products that we've been releasing, and they are not speaking to the, I would call, the core orange audience. You know, they are trying to branch out a little bit from that. So right now, my focus is actually on country, uh, indie, rock, um, and, uh, I mean, jazz and R&B, man, 100%. You know, it's it's time for us to maybe expand our boundaries a little bit, and that's what there's we're doing right now. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much uh, for being on the show. Alex with the Orange Amplifiers, Luke from Revolt Brand Management. That's revoltbrandmgmt.com. Thank you guys so much for being on here. Uh, an amazing Tuesday. A lot of good stuff here on this show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put up on the blog in the next couple of days. So. Those emerging artists out there that are listening, make sure you check that out on showslinger.com slash show. Like I said, you'll see that up in a couple of days. We'll uh, post the the latest and greatest hits from these last three segments. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming out. We will see you guys next week with Scott Robertson, one of the other preeminent hosts from Entertalk Radio. We're going to be talking about uh, branding and your band, and how to make the biggest splash and the biggest impact in the shortest period of time. You don't want to miss it. This is Entertalk Radio. I'm Paul Nicholas. We will see you next week. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.